Welcome, everybody. Those are some C tones for grounding the first chakra. And you're listening to some C overtones on the recording. So we're getting double C, double vision here. Uh, before we get into some chakra toning later, I just want to talk with you a little bit about sound. Uh, anybody here from yesterday's presentation we did? I know this beautiful lady was in there. Anybody else from yesterday? Somebody's come back for some more trouble, huh? Okay, good. Welcome. So, <clears throat> yeah. What you ate my apple? Oh yeah. Now you have to fight with my wife for that one. But, uh, uh, so those of you who weren't here yesterday, we levitated an apple and got it to tone and did all sorts of wonderful oh, things yeah. with sound. <gasps> a skeptic? Do we have a skeptic here? Okay, now we're going to have to vibrate you. <laughs> hey, you never know where it's going to go, you know, you never know. You be in the moment, you never know what'll happen. So, anybody here that isn't aware that your body is made out of sound? Or are you afraid to raise your hand? If you're <laughs> Well, I, I covered this yesterday, so those that uh, heard this yesterday can just meditate a little bit, but I always like to start my presentations with a little explanation of the sound stuff, because people come by and they can't understand, what, what can sound do? Is that going to heal my uh, pain, my back pain, my uh, emphysema, my uh, dandruff, my, uh, my uh, pain from my family, whatever it is? Can't imagine what sound could have to do with that, uh, and what it would help to help us to understand is if you realize that we live in a world of sound, that everything is sound, you might want to redefine your definition of sound. We tend to think of sound as what we hear with our ears. And it might be a uh, sound of somebody's voice or a sound of a truck going by, or it might be music. Most of us associate sound and music together uh, when they're very different things. S uh, music contains sound. Uh, sound doesn't always contain music, in the, at least in the traditional sense of the word music. Uh, but sound is literally everything. It's not just what you hear with your ears. We hear in our hearing bandwidth only from about 15 or 16 hertz, which is an abbreviation for cycles per second of the vibrations, to up to around 20,000 hertz. That's our hearing bandwidth. It's very limited. There's a lot of sound below that, which is referred to as infrasonic sound. And there's sound above that, which is ultrasonic sound. So we just hear within this certain realm. And after your age 19 or 20, you lose a couple thousand decibels above the, uh, of around that 20,000. You're really down to about 16 to 18,000 hertz. So uh, we start to lose some of the high end of our hearing. Now. We, most of us know that dogs hear up to 40,000 hertz. They have twice the hearing that we do. Uh, so that's why we have dog whistles that we can't hear, that the dogs can, because they hear <laughs> twice the range that we do. Bats and cats hear higher than dogs. Cats hear up to about 60,000 cycles per second. Most people don't discuss that. Why, I don't know, but see, they don't have the low range that we do or that dogs do. Dog, uh, cats don't hear those real low vibrations, those low sounds, although they do hear three times what humans hear and about twice what dogs hear. Now, bats have some of the highest range of hearing uh, that there is. They hear up to about 120, 130,000 cycles per second. They have uh, whatever that is, five, six times what we can hear. Mathematics wasn't my best subject in high school, but you get the idea. Uh, now, again, they don't hear the low end uh, as well, but uh, dolphins probably have the greatest range of hearing and uh, have been mapped to hear up to close to 200,000 cycles per second, which is like, what, 10 times what we, we can hear? So we kind of live in our own bodies and think in terms of uh, our hearing bandwidth that we more or less take for granted, but there's a lot of sound below and above that hearing range is simply the point that I want to make that is still sound. Now, when I say your bodies are made of sound, what do I mean by that? It might help to reflect back upon when we were in elementary school and our teachers told us, did you know your bodies are three quarters water and one quarter solid? We're 70% water, 30% solid. We all got that program at some point, did we not? I know I did. Uh, most people that I know, even in foreign countries, 
heard that uh, from some place, family, teacher, somebody. Okay, now we know with quantum physics research that there's more to that. Yes, our bodies are primarily water, like the Earth. And water carries sound vibrations more effectively than air does. Five times, in fact, what, uh, what air does. But there is no such thing as solid. We also know that, that our bones and teeth that we previously thought were solid, now we know are energy, frequency, vibration, sound. These are synonymous words. And they're just low density. So the sound is vibrating so slow, so low, the vibrations of energy and vibration in cycles per second is so low and so dense, there's more solidity. So this wall, which is sound, you might not be used to thinking of it as sound because it's so solid. It's just very dense. It's a low vibration, so far below our hearing range that the only way to hear this is with very, very sensitive, high-powered equipment. You could pick up the, the deep, low vibrational hum that's being emanated from this wall. So let's come back to our bodies. Our bones and teeth, similarly, are vibrating at dense rates of frequency, very low. Our muscles and t tissue and skin, however, are vibrating at faster, higher rates of frequency. So what's the result of that? Not as much density, right? It's more pliable. You can work with the skin, the muscles. It's not dense, brittle. It won't break. You can work with it a little bit more. Uh, this is why sound is starting to be being used with uh, massage therapy and chiropractic work and other work because it works, it's very malle malleable. And uh, of course, our skin and muscles are more malleable than our bones and teeth. So we have more cycles per second than vibration and less density to the skin and muscles and tissue. Now let's carry it to that water that our teachers talked about in our body that we were made of, uh, of three quarters or 70% water. That's more or less our blood and fluids in the body. The blood and fluids now have even less density, right? Not only are they malleable, but it's more formless. It doesn't have as much form. It will, liquid water will seep through cracks. It moves in, in without a container. It literally has no form because you're talking about a higher frequency now, much higher frequency, even much less uh, density. So you're with me? Are you more than just a sack of chemicals? Of course, we have thoughts and feelings, right? Regardless of our philosophy or a religion, whatever you want to call it, there's some energy that propels our body. Whether you want to call it the mind, spirit, soul, God, atma, would choose whatever name or word you want to use, there is subtle energy within the body that's more than just our physical essence. And this energy is vibrating at such high, such fast rates of frequency that not only is it way beyond the hearing range, but we're talking about formless, even less density still than the body uh, uh, chemistry, the body energies. So it gives you a little idea, hopefully, about this world of sound that we live in that starts in the world of our body that all of this is frequency, energy, and vibration. And, when you th and if you wanted to, we're not going to explore it much further, but if you wanted to, we could look at consciousness itself. The astral body is vibrating above, has, uh, faster and higher than the physical body. Faster and higher vibration still is the mental body and the causal body. And then when you get to the soul, the actual soul frequency, it's vibrating at an infinite frequency.